Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Codex Shul, also known as Hack Shul. And if you haven't checked out my other channel, which is for cybersecurity information technology and ethical hacking pen testing, uh, definitely give that uh, channel a look because it covers more of the deep side of things on the interwebs. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about um, setting up your router, specifically mine's the Netgear. So if you happen to have Netgear, then this will uh, definitely benefit you. But if you happen to have a different menu, manufacturer then this will give you some idea of how to set things up so i do apologize that i don't have your specific model uh if you want to cough up some money to go to have me go get your specific model then yeah i can help you out definitely make a video on that one but that's not the case here um we're going to be setting up our router here to fit a little bit of our needs for on uh, the security side of things so um there's that and if you ever need more security uh if you ever need a cheap vpn check out private internet access um links are in the description below that's my support link uh, and supports the channel if you happen to choose that VPN. Okay, let's go ahead and get on with the video here. So once you're logged in towards your uh, router here, um, you wanna go towards your internet setup or something similar, right? Uh, I set up a DNS, which is um, the Cloudflare's DNS 1.1.1.1 and the secondary 1.0.0.1. The reason why I chose that is because they don't keep any logs. Um, it reduces the latency of getting to the next server or reduces the hops. Uh, so that really helps out as well. Um, it's built on a massive network. Uh, and if if you do comparisons with Open DNS, Google, or VeriSign, see how they have a little bit of a higher latency. Um, it's private, so they again they don't keep ads, they don't sell ads, unlike your ISP or who you're going with. So um, definitely give one dot one dot one dot one a try and see if you like it or not. I definitely recommend it. Um, that's what I choose. Uh, as for your wireless setup, uh, if you happen to have uh, the five gigahertz bandwidth, I would rather you have that enabled and disable 2.4 Gs. However, if you disable the 2.4 uh, Gs, your old like older devices that are not capable of carrying the five gigahertz band will not be able to use your wireless uh, or your Wi-Fi. Um, the reason why I have mine disabled is because with the five gigahertz, um, one, it's faster. Two, it has a shorter signal, so it's not broadcasting out that extended range. Um, I don't need 2.4 four to extend out to the entire neighborhood not saying that i have the um wireless range to do so but i would like to reduce it towards my environment uh, which you can also set up your radio um power level um if that's an option i know that's an option within the linksys uh routers but um that's why i have mine disabled and um, I only want to have on a five gigahertz band. And also if you were to have this one enabled, um, it could conflict with each, with each other, even though it's on separate uh, frequencies on the wireless spectrum. Um, to me, it feels like it's still conflict with each other because there's two radio signals that are sending out and trying to broadcast towards your devices. So, um, yeah, definitely got to send out, censor out the the name of my SSID or the Wi-Fi name and the passwords as well. But um, that's that's why I only have the five point um, the five Gs broadcast out, because uh, within the shorter range of the signal. Um, as for your WAN, uh, you want to disable port scans and DDoS protect or DOS protection. Um. If you disable port scans, uh, like if I were to have a port scanner and I happen to have your IP address and I would like to port scan, see what services are running. If you have a web server, okay, what now I know you have a web server. Um, what scripts are you running? Or if you're running some type of services and I happen to have an exploit for that, uh, that's no good. So you just want to have that extra security to disable your port scans. As for DOS protection, um, 
maybe from an external network, like an outside network that is sending a DOS attack, not a DDoS attack, but a DOS attack. Um, it maybe would help filter that out, but however, um, it would definitely disable a ping of death. Um, so it's not really, this is not really helpful for a, a DDoS attack. You need something that's more heavier than that to actually filter out requests. So, um, but you definitely want to disable port scans. I never have a DMZ server because unless if you were having running a server and this will open up all of your ports on that specific um, server. I respond to ping on the internet port. I just keep that uh, disabled um, and just go ahead and hit apply. As for a LAN setup, uh, this is not really particular anything. Um, however, I changed my um, IP subnet um, or my IP uh, range. So the DHCP server. So instead of it was like 192.168.0.1, I just changed it to this. Um, even like even though you can still get into the gateway by going to IP config on your um, command prompt or if config on your terminal, you can still see the gateway, but it's just one extra security layer of how to avoid an idiot. Um, you're still able to get the gateway, no doubt, but you know, if you can outsmart someone by an extra step, why not? Uh, as for QoS, it doesn't really matter. Um, as for guest network, I would keep like, hopefully your guest network is separated um, it's dedicated to its own um, VLAN or it's different dedicated to its own little network because if you have guest network enabled, they could still run a scan on your network and see what devices are popped up. So um, I don't have my guest networks pop up. I, I People don't need my free internet. You want internet? Pay for it. Um, but yeah, as for the USB functions and the NetGear downloader, that's this is not to be worried about. I'm not gonna mess around with this. As for security, parental controls, um, if you happen to have that NetGear, you can you know do a little bit more about it. Um, as for like a parental control type of thing where we're gonna start discussing about, if um, there's a DNS out there, I forget what it's called, um, but uh, they're really, focused on like if you're if somebody goes to a no-no site and you don't want them to that's um that's where you can like change your dns so if we go back towards our where is it our internet setup um just look up dns hosts and on google and just see if there's like a parental control block and they'll just like stop you from going to sites and you can set that up right there so that definitely helps out. If you don't want that, um, NetGear has its own parental control stuff. As for access control, um, you can still play a part of um, parental control in the sense of this way. Um, as for me, I don't. I want to turn on access control. And other routers, it's called MAC filtering. MAC filtering will only allow the devices that you want to be on the network. So it shows your MAC address. Each device has its own designated MAC address. So that's how it can specify or um, find out which device is which. It's like, okay, so this MAC address right here, I'm gonna censor on the video, but uh, you see you know, like a blue highlight blurred out. Um, we can turn on access control and we can allow specifically only this device to be on the be on the network and all these other devices to be off the network or so on and so forth. So um, if you don't know how to get your Mac address and if it doesn't ever pop up for you or if you need if you have this turned on and you need to manually set up a Mac address, let's go ahead and, and uh, click turn on access control real quick and um, it should allow us to have an add button to go through. Oh, okay, yeah, there's the add button right there, uh, which I'm gonna have to blur out. So right here, if you scroll down, uh, there's an add button that you can manually assign a MAC address. You just gotta get that MAC address from your device. Um, if it's from your phone, go to your settings. Um, if it's from your computer, you can get it from your um, terminal or you can get it from your um, network and sharing center. Um, as for block sites, 
you know, if you want to block out certain keywords or domain names, you can do that as well. Block services. What kind of services are we going to be blocking? Um, this is where it gets a little bit more detailed. Uh, I would like to block out an FTP so you can never file transfer to another server or receive from. Um, if I don't want you to connect towards a, um, a HTTP website and I want you to always connect to an HTTPS website, uh, that will force you to connect um, to an HTTPS. So I would rather you be on a secured uh, platform rather than a non-secured uh, platform when you're browsing the internet. Um, we can also block out IRC chats and other stuff. We can also block out VPNs. So people are not able to bypass on your router. Um, and even with ports that you want to block out as well. Uh, schedules, this is more like a parental control thing, is what would you allow internet to be um, to be on during this time. Um, you can send yourself an o your own email of logs. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, you can check out your logs. You definitely want to set up a password if you um, haven't changed your router password. Uh, so go ahead and do that as well. As for like a router upgrade, um, I have mine set to enable for an update automatic because I would always like to have the latest firmware unless if there's like, um, if I'm running on an old firmware that happens to be vulnerable to the internet, I would rather have a updated patch for it immediately. So I don't have to worry about all, um, all the badness in the world. Uh, wireless security, they already talk about this. Um, if I, if you could disable your WPS pin, go ahead and do so. Because if there's not a, an auto disable um, attempt after three tries, um, people are still able to brute force random digits until they get into your router. So as for me, I've been trying to figure out how to disable my router pin. I don't want that enabled whatsoever, but if you can disable yours, do it. Uh, wireless access point. Uh, no, we don't need to discover that. Uh, port forwarding. Um, we don't have to discover, we don't have to talk about that. VPN, remote management. Um, don't have this enabled unless if you want people or yourself to remote into your router outside of your own network, if you need to make a configuration change. So if you have this enabled, then definitely change the password towards your router. It's idiotic if you do not do that. Uh, UPnP, it's basically like auto port forwarding for the services that needs uh, to be um, connected towards to. As for IPv6, if you don't have yours enabled, have yours enabled automatically, unless if your ISP uh, specifies otherwise. I did auto detect and just clicked uh, on path through. Uh, for me, I like to have the traffic meter uh, up and running to see how much data that I'm using a month. I have unlimited data, but I would like to see where I'm at. Um, as for VLANs, it's with this specific Netgear uh, model, this VLAN really sucks ass. It's not able, th this is just for IPTV um, configuration. This is not for actual VLAN configuration because if this specific model allowed me to do what I wanted to do with the VLANs, I could isolate a device um, on its own subnet, on its own little network, so it's not able to discover anything else that's on the device. So if I were to, uh, let's just say for an example, if I have every div every computer on its own subnet, and if I downloaded a bad file that it's trying to, um, you know, it's a, it's a virus and it's doing bad things and it's trying to attach itself to other devices on the network, I don't want that. And I'm more, and I'm more in a safer environment. I wish that this was a function in this specific uh, router, but however, I have to purchase another router to have it on a different network. So there's that. 
Um, and also if someone were to like a guest, again, if you have guests network enabled, um, you don't want them snooping on your network. You want them isolated from every other device. So there's that. Hopefully maybe one day Negear could release a firmware update for this model. I doubt it, but, um, given the circumstances that I have, um, I had I had to purchase a dinky little other router and set up a whole different addressing for that and just allowed other um, ports to be opened towards that router than open ports on that router towards that server. So um, this is just something that's a little bit basic. Uh, just tweak things around and I hope you get a little bit more of an insight of what you could do of how my settings are, um, how to protect yourself and just give you a little bit more of idea um, of how you could set up things in your specific router. So yeah, I hope that this video was informative, that it will give you a little bit more of a security sense to set up your router. Um, if you happen to mess things up that you don't happen to have internet, uh, revert things back to the old settings or um, there's a master reset button that you get like a tiny little pin and you poke that down for at least 30 to 60 seconds and it'll factor reset everything. Um, and if you still happen to lose internet, that's you need to contact your internet service provider to correct that router slash modem. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. Uh, if you guys haven't already, hit the like, subscribe, hit the post notifications. Uh, I do live stream on Mixer. Come through on that. Um, if you guys got any questions that are legitimate and not illegal and you're and definitely don't ask me how to, how do I get revenge on this person? Like, you can fuck off with that. Um, but if you happen to have a serious query or query, if you happen to have a serious question that's legitimate and non-malicious, um, Come through on the Discord specifically, but hang out on the live streams. I don't do tech support on live streams um, anymore, but specifically for uh, on Discord. So I'll see you guys on the next video. You all take care. Peace. Thank you for sticking around. Please feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow my social media. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon or send in a donation of any amount with PayPal. It really helps out with post-production, equipment, food in my belly, and also continue making free content for you guys. Links in the description. Y'all take care, and thank you once again.